Ever since Blair Motion Pictures was bought by the NFL and renamed NFL Films, we've been making season and review films. Each year, we take the best footage, the best sound, and the greatest moments from the season and present them in a unique way. Now, 1974 wasn't a particularly great season. There were no record-breaking performances, no team went undefeated, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, on the threshold of a dynasty, were a surprising but hardly sensational world champion. In fact, the 1974 season might best be remembered for this film, The Championship Chase, which combined seasonal themes and a script which included sort of a Greek chorus. Looking back, all the components of this one were perfect. The footage, the music of Sam Spence, and perhaps the best reads of John Facenda's career. Over 30 years later, this film still stands up as one of our best. The National Football League originated in the 1920s in rural America, then moved to the cities to flourish and prosper. But each summer, the game relives its heritage. Tiny college towns across the country witness the first bloom of the NFL season. The summer of 74 began with just a few eager rookies because the veterans were out on strike. But after eight uneasy weeks, the strike ended and coaches welcomed back familiar faces. There's glory in the legends of this hard muscle life, and there's poetry in each season made of sweat and strife. But now is the time to work and strain at a sport that tests the spirit and challenges the brain. Two thirty-six slash! 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 See, here's the difference between 25 trap and 25 wheat. If Y doesn't put that ball away right away, we, we go for a fumble, see? What the hell are you doing, John? Come back and get it. Charlie, come back toward the ball. If he's coming, I'm going to engage him, and then I'm going to slip out into the screen. Concentrate, get better. Say to yourself, I got to get better. Right, that's the way to come off. Hit up, Rich. Hit up, Rich. Hit up. We're that's it. Moving the feet. Moving the feet. Here's the hands. There it is. Eve. There it is. Come on, come on. All sights are set on one glittering goal, the chance to play and win in the Super Bowl. whisper of high hopes. Victory is in the skies. A season awaits with glory in her eyes. One joins with many on summer's green field. Time to strive, to dare, for all not to yield.
Right from the opening kickoff, the championship chase of 1974 took on added dimensions. A new rule moved the kickoff back five yards, and more kicks were returned for more touchdowns than ever before. On punts, another new rule permitted only two defenders to head downfield before the ball is kicked. With more time to size up the coverage, nimble return specialists like Cincinnati's Lamar Parrish made the punt return a game-breaking offensive weapon. But summer is not for rules. It's for romance and adventure. Princes and maidens hear the wedding bell while little boys gather with fairy tales to tell. Once upon a time, there was a tiny halfback who played for the New England Patriots. He was so small that his uniform did not fit and you could only see part of the number on his back. Everyone laughed and said, you're too small to play. But the tiny halfback knew better. I know I can, he said, and practiced every day. When the season began, his teammates gathered around and asked him, do you think you can play? I know I can, the little halfback said. I know I can, he said, as he ran onto the field. And lo and behold, he could. The little halfback who could is Mac Herron, and he was the inspiration that carried the New England Patriots to five consecutive wins and an early lead in the tough Eastern Division of the American Conference. And for the first time in years, there was a murmur of title talk in Beantown. But titles were more than just talk in St. Louis, where coach Don Coriel had restored spirit and togetherness to a team that had lacked both for years. Coriel put the bomb back into the Cardinals' playbook, and quarterback Jim Hart commanded the most complete arsenal in pro football. St. Louis exploded for seven straight victories, and suddenly first place in the National Conference East was no longer the exclusive province of the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. Against the Redskins, the bullet was better than the bomb, as tiny Terry Metcalf shot through Washington's defense for 75 yards, the longest touchdown run of the year. Against Dallas, St. Louis unleashed a tank in cleats named Jackie Smith, who crashed through six cowboys en route to the deciding touchdown. And the Cardinals marched into autumn with a firm hold on their first division title in 26 years. Autumn is a gypsy queen who dons a crimson dress and wild along the land she runs, red blossoms on her breast. Autumn is a happy place where children, big or small, should always wear a funny face and never, never sulk at all. Trinkets twinkle in clusters bright and the goldenrod is yellow. The holly tree is a beautiful sight and the pumpkin's getting mellow. Autumn is full of surprises, and everyone gets their share. Excitement electrifies us, 
and victory spikes the air. Autumn nights are full of sights that are often wild and rare. Ogres and trolls come out of holes, and phantoms float through the air. On an autumn eve, we still believe that elves are about, and fairies come out, to bob for apples and prizes. But goblins and sprites play havoc all night, and tumble in different disguises. When Don Coriel's Cardinals came to a Monday night masquerade party, they met Bud Grant wearing his game face. Grant's Minnesota Vikings came dressed as Central Division champions, but it was no disguise. Although Chuck Foreman and Fran Tarkington scored easily and often, the Vikings again relied on their old formula for victory. Keep the ball when it's yours, take it away when it's not. The Vikings accepted the victory with the relaxed spirit of a team that's used to winning and returned to Minnesota assured of their sixth playoff berth in the last seven years. In Los Angeles, the Rams were also easy winners of their division. Super Bowl hopes blossomed under the California sunshine and flourished in the fertile enthusiasm of the Los Angeles Coliseum. Coach Chuck Knox was pleased with the growing maturity of his young quarterback, James Harris. But the cutting edge of the Ram attack was Lawrence McCutcheon, number 30, the leading ground gainer in the National Conference. But the Rams were even better at stopping touchdowns than making them. Their young, hungry defense feasted on opposing quarterbacks and allowed the fewest points in the NFC. By the middle of autumn, the Rams were celebrating their second straight Western Division Championship. In Washington, where the Redskins play, Coach George Allen values the resources of age more than the powers of youth, and autumn's bounty came in the shape of 40-year-old Sonny Jurgensen. After 18 years in the NFL, the bones are battered but the head is still red and the arm is still golden. After losing two of their first four games, the sagging Redskins rallied around Jurgensen, who put them back on the winning track with a come from behind victory over the Miami Dolphins. But it is defense that makes George Allen smile and it was the alert defense of the Redskins that kept their playoff hopes alive. For 
For Washington, autumn days brought victory and renewed hope and another chance at the championship chase. But for others, there was only the painful face of failure. Super Bowl dreams that glowed in the summer sunshine flicker and fade in the autumn shadows. And hopes that were high in the heat of September can wilt and die in the chill of November. November can be cold and gray. November can be surly, with bitter rain upon the world and winter coming early. Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? Go face them and fight them. Be savage again. The palms of your hands will thicken. The skin of your cheek will tan. You'll grow ragged and weary and wet. But you must do the best you can. Joe Namath might not be the man for all seasons, but he was certainly the man for November. After seven dismal defeats, he found the sun again, leading the New York Jets to a thrilling sudden death victory over their arch rivals, the New York Giants. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten, he wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black moustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. After an opening day loss, the Oakland Raiders overwhelmed their next nine opponents with an awesome passing attack led by quarterback Ken Stabler and wide receiver Cliff Branch, number 21. The Raiders were the highest scoring team in the NFL, and their claim to the Western Division Championship of the AFC was never questioned. While the race was over in the West, in the East, it was just beginning. Coach Lou Saban brought his Buffalo Bills to Foxborough, Massachusetts to challenge the undefeated New England Patriots. As expected, he built his game plan on the slashing skills of Orange Juice Simpson number 32. And Buffalo dealt the Patriots their first defeat. In a rematch two weeks later, the Patriots designed their defense to stop Simpson, and they did. But Buffalo's defense was designed to win, and it worked. A 72-yard interception returned by linebacker Dave Washington put the Bills on the road to victory. And as for the Patriots, Gertrude Stein would have said, instead of going the way they were going, they went back the way they had come. The Bills, on the other hand, went south for a first-place showdown with the world champion Miami Dolphins. Lou Saban let them know what was at stake. First thing, I want you to make sure that you take as much liquid as you possibly can. It's going to be hot out there, there's no question about that. So don't be bashful. Don't feel that you have to go without your fluids. We're at the crossroads. And no question about that. But it's not the end of the world. 
I just want us to do a job that we're capable of doing. We've talked about it. We've had our rough moments and our good ones and our bad ones. But you're still tied with them, and you got a chance to go up on top. They're on their home grounds. This makes it that much more difficult. Understand? If we die, we die together. You can get it done. You can get it done. What's more, you got to get it done. Let's go. Saban had his team ready, but it was Miami that jumped to the early advantage. Now what do we do? There's seven down. I know, Bob, but it's tough. Things got tougher as Miami stopped the juice and then put quarterback Joe Ferguson out of the game. Ferguson's injury forced Saban to go with an untested rookie, Gary Marangi. The Dolphins' lead seemed secure, but incredibly, Marangi's first pro pass found its mark. J.D. Hill's catch aroused the Bills, and they poured in to scatter the world champions. The Dolphins could not control the game, and a worried Don Shula saw his team's lead slip to a single touchdown, 28 to 21. With two minutes left in the game, Buffalo had 50 yards to go for the tie. Bobby Chandler said he's wide open in the middle. And he will be in our They're going to go in the blue, so 53, they try to hit Bobby in the middle. Got the idea? Kickoff now, just like an even game. Defense, you gotta do it. Now you gotta really do it. Six seconds and we let him get off the hook. That's about the extent of it. Yeah, to be pleased with the way Moringa came in. Still 35 28. That's all I remember. We've got to beat these people one of these days, and we haven't been able to do it. But we're coming after them again next week. Well, you know, the guys, we got to move and the guys start hitting pretty good defense. Uh, you know, they really, the defense kind of kept us in the game there, you know, getting them, kept getting the ball for us. And we started clicking there and it looked like the momentum was on our side. And uh, Miami came back and that's exactly why they're the world champs.
Although Miami went on to win the Eastern Division title, they were not the indestructible world champions of the year before. Larry Zonka, number 39, limped through the season on a sore ankle, and injuries chopped up the offensive line. A hard-striding rookie named Benny Malone, number 32, eased the obligations of the injured Zonka, but quarterback Bob Greasy was scrambling from defenses he had once dominated with precision passing. In spite of its troubles, Miami won 11 games. Only the Oakland Raiders won more. But with the coming of winter was the chilled suspicion that Miami's reign as world champions would end. Something somber in the skies. Something somber in the eyes of the men. Late autumn in the air, but something of winter in their faces. Nature strips down to do battle with the elements, and the championship chase charges to a close in a rush of rib-cracking cold. Pittsburgh, Franco's army bundled up for a winter march behind Franco Harris and his closing drive toward a thousand yards. With quarterback Terry Bradshaw back in the lineup, even more authority was added to the running game. And Pittsburgh gained more yards on the ground than any team in the AFC. But when the passing attack took a nosedive, Coach Chuck Knoll came to depend more than ever on his rugged defense. Few were the quarterbacks who grew fat at the expense of the Steelers secondary, and Pittsburgh's pass rush was the most fearsome in all of football. The steel curtain descended on the central division of the AFC. The Steelers iced first place and settled back for a short winter's nap before the playoffs. The Buffalo Bills, however, wore the savage face of cold. After their loss to Miami, they battled back into contention. They fought their way to the American Conference wild card berth and celebrated their first appearance in the NFL playoffs. Sing a song of winter, celebrations in the air. Sing a song of snowflakes falling everywhere. Sing a song of sleds. Sing a song of tumbling over heels and heads. days with a furry collar, a time when the sun is a silver dollar, and the hills are filled with goose down stuffing, and your breath makes smoke like an engine puffing. Through the wasteland of winter, the cold wind moans, but the will to win can warm old bones. The proud old pros of the Washington Redskins showed that although age may slow a man down, emotion can speed him up. In a crucial game against the Dallas Cowboys, they proved that a good old team is better than a good young one. 
Bill Kilmer shared the quarterbacking duties with Sonny Jurgensen to give Washington two of the oldest and boldest quarterbacks in pro football. The Redskins won six of their last seven games and earned the last wild card berth in the playoffs. The countdown toward the playoffs begins. Eight teams have succeeded. The rest have failed. But all have shared in the championship chase. 1974 was truly a season of opportunity. More rookies made the NFL than ever before. While the veterans were on strike, newcomers like Doug Coda, number 44 of the Giants, gained valuable practice time and earned starting positions. New England started a rookie, Sam Hunt, number 50, at middle linebacker. And he was a major reason why the Patriots had the best defense against the run in the AFC. The Pittsburgh Steelers won the American Conference Central Division with 14 rookies on their roster. The best of whom were John Stallworth, number 82, a wide receiver from Alabama A&M, and Jack Lambert, number 58, their starting middle linebacker from Kent State. But the year's great prize was Don Woods, number 33 of the San Diego Chargers. A rookie at the beginning of the year, a hero at its end. Woods was drafted sixth by Green Bay, who glanced at him in training camp and then waved him to San Diego for $100. We goofed, admitted Packer coach Dan Devine, as Woods went on to gain more yards running than any rookie in the history of the NFL. Wood's performance, as good as it was, did not match up to that of Otis Armstrong, number 24 of the Denver Broncos. In his second year in the league, Armstrong gained a total of 1,407 yards, averaged 5.3 yards a carry, and won the NFL rushing championship. The passing championship was won by Cincinnati's Ken Anderson, who led the NFL in yards gained passing and was the league's most accurate quarterback. His favorite receiver was Isaac Curtis, number 85, and one out of every three completions to Curtis resulted in a touchdown. Anderson and Curtis gained glory in a season, but there were others who gained it in one brief afternoon. On Thanksgiving Day in Dallas, rookie quarterback Clint Longley, number 19, packed away enough thrills to fill up most people forever. Against the Redskins, he led the Cowboys to two touchdowns. And then, with 35 seconds left to play, and the Cowboys trailing by six points, he put his arm and heart into a 50-yard rainbow that won the game for Dallas. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, it was a victory they could not use. The next week, they were eliminated from the playoffs for the first time in nine years. While the Cowboys were learning about defeat, a long-time loser was learning what it feels like to win. The Houston Oilers entered their final game with a chance for their first non-losing season in five years. And the man responsible was Coach Sid Gilman. Everybody up here! Let's go, come on, wait a minute. In his first full season as head coach of the Oilers, Gilman turned a bunch of ragtag rejects into a solid team. We've had a great season. Been a hell of a season. But they remember it by the very last game that you played. We've got to get this one. And the only way we're going to get it is everybody put forth 60 damn minutes of everything that you own. Do that and go with it. Here. All right. Go on. Oh, no. Just a minute. Let it all out. Let's go. Dan, you might think too of 76 Y corner. 
Tom Wright with Monster. Tom Wright with Monster. 33 years in the game have not diminished Gilman's drive and ambition. And football remains his passion as well as his profession. Oh, Willie! Hit him, Willie! Damn it! Oh, what's the matter with you? Drop! Drop, dummy! Drop! Damn it! Will you dumb The competitive edge was as sharp as ever. The judgments were just as absolute. Get him out of there because he has no hands. Through strength of will, the old man taught Houston how to win. Let's go for it because we're too far away. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. In the end, seven wins would not earn the Oilers a playoff berth. But pride and respectability had returned to Houston, and Sid Gilman was honored as AFC Coach of the Year. So it was left to an old pro to offer forth the last smile of a declining year. Been at it for a long time. Been at it for a long time. And I'm sure I got more satisfaction out of this year than any year since I've been in it. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're a great bunch of guys. And a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all of you. Pro football is a game, not a war. It's for win or lose, not life or death. But say that in the summer, for winter brings the playoffs and a season is at stake. Don Coriel brought his St. Louis Cardinals to Minnesota and his big play offense burned the Vikings with an early touchdown. But Minnesota retaliated with a beautifully balanced scoring drive which left the Cardinal defense in a state of shock from which they never seemed to recover. The Viking defense dominated the game in the second half and once again demonstrated their ability to break a good club in half like a twig. the Vikings muffled the Cardinals in the snow, George Allen warmed up his Redskins for their playoff with the Los Angeles Rams. Just one thing, we wait a lifetime for this opportunity. We play as 47 men, they can't get it. season long Washington thrived on turnovers but against the Rams they coughed up fumbles and ironically choked on their own mistakes the 
The touchdown that put the game away for the Rams was a 58-yard interception return by Isaiah Robertson, number 58. Defense won the game in Los Angeles, and defense was expected to be the deciding factor in Pittsburgh where the Steelers met the Bills. Defense! 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 Steelers win it all the way to Super Bowl, the best defensive team in the nation. And we figured out scientifically, without any prejudice, who's going to win the ball game. The Steelers are going to win because they're hungry. They didn't have no breakfast today. They've been waiting for the juice! <laughs> We're waiting for the juice. Juice, juice, 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 juice. Go juice. Come on, juice. Come on, juice. No. No. Way to go, Frank. Get out. like a hook. Okay. Right. We got all kind of running room. Yeah. the Pittsburgh fans sang their prophecy. The Oakland Raiders set forth to challenge the world champions. In Oakland, the championship chase reached full stride when the Dolphins' Nat Moore returned the opening kickoff 89 yards. But Ken Stabler blew the wind back into Raider sails as he rained touchdowns down on the Dolphins. Black handkerchiefs billowed in tribute to Oakland and paid a mock salute to Dolphin dreams of a third straight Super Bowl. But champions die hard, and mighty Miami gave it one last go. running out, the poised Raiders moved with the confidence of a team that had begun to feel it was unbeatable.
Four teams bathed in victory's glow, but only two would survive the following Sunday. December 29th dawned crystal cold in Minnesota and bright blue by Oakland Bay as four teams of champions stood forth in full array. Each bold and strong and ready to attack in uniforms of white and purple and gold and black. began in summer, the legions of the sun. Now, as warriors of winter, the chase is almost done. On these winds of victory ride emotions of a year, of work and sweat, guts, glory, and fear. teams have gained a champion's fame, two teams of men both skilled and game, men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin, and now they confront each other for a prize only one can win. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by NFL Network. Watch the National Football League 24 hours a day on NFL Network.